You're our first guest on our new set. I love it. Thank you, bro. What inspired the new set? Um, well, you know, we had just been doing it in mm -hmm. the living room for the longest time, and now that I've officially moved in with my wife, yes. we've had the guest room, yes. and we needed to turn it into a place that can support this podcast. Yes. And we decided we wanted to do a table. Do you dig it? I do dig. Thank you, Brooke. I love having support in front of me. It is it pretty feels nice. feels grounding. It does. And yeah. you can wear whatever sort of pants or bottoms you want. Like I'm wearing sweatpants oh, right yeah, now and nobody no knows. no pants if you wanted to. Well, not no pants. Sorry. But or not. I mean, would you do no pants on a podcast? N like, I guess not. I don't know why I said that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You've had quite a morning. I have. Well, according to your Instagram stories, your TV crashed. Oh, that was yesterday. Yeah, oh. that was horrible. Get this. Got home from Thanksgiving. Flew in. Get home to about 10 stolen packages. Are your arms tired? From Thanksgiving? <laughs> no, from flying in. You said oh, I just got back from oh, Thanksgiving. Uh, Boy, uh, my yeah, arms yeah, tired. Yeah. Okay, so you yes. get in. Get in to about 10 stolen packages right off the bat. <gasps> no! 10 stolen packages except for I got a huge new bookshelf. So that was the only one that wasn't stolen because <laughs> this person probably could not yeah. transport that. So I'm bringing the bookshelf in and I um, drop the bookshelf onto my TV. <gasps> So it was kind of like a one fell swoop of just like unfortunate events. Did it damage the TV? Is the screen the damaged? It's completely <laughs> no longer with us. Oh, that's the worst. So then I had to order a new one. But it was Cyber Monday, so silver lining. Oh, good. What yeah. kind of TV did you get? Just like a standard like a Amazon. Smart, a box. smart TV. A smart TV. Yeah. That's, those yeah. are the best ones. Yeah. My a still, Roku? Roku TV? No. Oh. It was an Amazon Fire TV. Oh, uh, okay. With smart. Does with, Roku, with intelligence. Does Roku make TVs? I think it's just it's, like you have a standard TV and then you buy a Roku. You can buy a Roku as like a sticker, a plug into a regular TV, but they also make TVs with Roku pre-installed. TCL makes them. Mm. I think it's the best TV. I'm anti uh, team Roku. Matt, Matt doesn't like Roku. I just think the remotes are hideous looking. I I'm not I don't disagree with that. I think it like won an award though for the most ergonomic and best remote of any it looks smart like a, TV. It looks like a children's cell phone. The yeah, remote does. It looks like it's for toddlers. <laughs> like, Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. You know who said that? Uh, Steve Jobs did. Sure did. Ooh. Good job. Wow, Ten that was points. Really good. And okay, so your TV broke, mm -hmm. but we're establishing a bookshelf. Yeah, so that's exciting. Because you have too many books, that's why you need a bookshelf. I've been getting really into reading, so I wanted a bookshelf, and also I've just been like wanting to redecorate my whole apartment. So it's kind of just like a two in one. That's perfect, bro. Yeah, and, thank and you. Matt. It seems like not having the TV has forced you to read a little bit more. At least again, according to your Instagram you, stories, you would think. But I've just been on my phone with oh. a book in my hand. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, so. so you're not actually reading when you're posting. It's like, let me post the story. It, Mike, exactly. Yes. Okay. Yes. What okay. book are you reading at the current moment? At this time? Reading. Um, reading? <laughs> well, I was so, I read like six books over Thanksgiving break. And oh. I thought it was going to be the same once I got back, but it never is. Mm. So right now I'm reading, um, completely blanking on the title, for something about brilliant young women. So maybe something like that. Oh, brilliant it's, young women. Does that sound right? I, it's not brilliant. Hold on. Let me look at my no, good reads. Yeah, pull it up. Mike can Remarkable? I Remarkable? No, I'm thinking of Well, I saw some meme that there's like a bunch of those TV shows like Tiny Perfect Things, Little yes. Little Tiny Things, Map of Perfect Places, A like, Thousand Little Pieces, yeah. A Tiny Million Pieces. It's right. just like the title of all those like young adult shows. There was, there was a trend for a while where it was like, "Oh, the woman uh, the on the train, window, the woman the across train, the yeah. street. Oh, yeah. and they made Looking, a whole movie called like the woman across the street yeah, in the like train in the window. Yeah, that what Kristen Bell was in, I right. think. Yes, right. Which was like a horror spoof, right? Comedy, I don't but know, also I never horror. Watched it, but. Mike just joined our book club. We started a book mm. club. Yes. What are you reading? I'm reading Bright Young Women. That's what it's called. Bright, Bright Young and it's Women. About, um, it's like a fictionalized, but like based on facts retelling of like ted bundy and those murders and specifically like his last are murders. you attracted to ted bundy no actually i think that's important to say based off of what i'm learning in this book right that's just like it was part of the problem were you attracted so, though to zach I, yes, efron ted bundy yes, and that i would encourage um casting directors to stop hiring like very attractive people to play serial killers right right yeah, that's probably a little conflicting yeah because who was the guy that played jeffrey dahmer he was evan peters that's but correct that's like he wasn't attract like he was embodying jeffrey dahmer fully like that there was no part of me that was attracted to that in that the ted, even though i love evan peters ted bundy no zach efron's ted bundy very attractive man ted bundy 
IRL. I don't think he was that attractive. But I guess it kind of is important to the story because like that's how he got away with so much is okay. because he was so charming and attractive. But it's also just like ugh, icky. It really blows my mind when you s- see these people that are like in jail, mm-hmm. like men who have committed horrific crimes. They're in jail and they have like fan clubs of women who write them letters. They get married. Yeah, yes. it is. Really what am scary. I doing wrong? No, <laughs> Why? Like, like, I, I, I can't you understand. Don't, you it. don't want that. I promise. I know I don't want that, but like, how? Just what? What is going on in the world where like that person has is like beating them off? Like, no, I have I have a wife already, guys. I'm so sorry. Stop sending me letters. Like, yeah. what is it? Who are these people? I mean, you're right. They're probably not. They're, I think it's just like, thankfully, we're not even able to understand them because right. our brains are not. It's probably not nice not Jewish like girls. I don't think in that LA they're what that you are... would be looking for, Mike. Okay, yeah. that's fair. Thanks, Brooke. Are, are you really a big you true com- true crime fan? Are you following like active cases going on? No, I'm more of a like criminal minds. Like oh. fictionalized crime, but like with some real elements. That's based on a true yeah, story, yeah, but has been exactly, altered for TV. Exactly. Yeah, I've been like really infatuated with the Chris Watts case. Do you know that no. one? Oh, he was like the dad that like murdered his wife and his two daughters. Is that and the he, one that um, hid them in that the water tower? Documentary. Yes. Like the family next door or something? Yes. That, and they have all of the horrific. body cam of them like. Oh. Him arriving to the scene, him going through the house, explaining that she's missing, and he's just lying to That's his hard. neighbors yeah. and his that was friends. Horrifying. I can't get enough of that stuff, it's though. It's really, I know. When it's someone's like, lying through their teeth. Up. And I love interrogation videos, like those long ones that are an oh, hour long, where they break it down. Oh, yeah. If it's in uh-huh. eight parts, I'm set for yeah. the rest yeah. of the <laughs> night. Yeah. I like, sometimes I'm like, oh, there's something wrong with me because, like, I am drawn to that kind of stuff. Like, yes. But I think it's unfortunately just like human curiosity. I just get fascinated that it's the person's last day ever getting away with it. And it's like, they're, they're never going to walk life. out as a free man yeah. and they think they're getting away with it. It almost feels like they're in the principal's office, but the, the punishment the are much higher. Big time. Yeah. I'm surprised more people don't flee the country when they're like awaiting trial and they're on bail. A lot of times that does happen. Does it happen a lot? But I feel like it doesn't, you don't hear about that that often where they got away with it. There's not a lot of documentaries that I've seen where it's like he was put on bail, whatever, 50,000, and then they like escaped to Canada or Mexico. And like, I I feel like I would definitely do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like try and escape. I look up Google what, what countries don't have extradition laws. I think laws. it's probably harder than you think. Probably. Have you ever had to call the police? Ooh, Matt, that's a good question. No, I don't think so. Have you? No. You've but never? I, you, you say that as if you're like really wanting to. I don't know. I don't think I've ever called 911. Because I, call uh, but right I now? look forward to the day where I have to. Because sometimes you hear 911 recordings and the person's just not saying the address. They're not giving all the information. <laughs> Buddy, if uh-huh. you get me on a phone call to 911, I'm giving them all the details that they need to hear. Off the bat. But don't they know everything right away based off of just... Their no, intelligence so. systems. You would think, but I, they still have to ask what your address because is. Because I've called 911 by accident, and they've come to my house. Oops. No way. When I was little, yeah. Oh, and that was you, even before. How'd you call 911 by know. accident? I, I don't know. It genuinely. That does happen a lot. That happened in my house. Like when I was my young. youngest brother, he's like two or three years old, just playing with the phone, accidentally dials 911. I always feel like I'm accidentally calling 911 when you like touch the buttons on your phone. Oh, when you a little accidentally goes boop, yeah. like yeah. sending an emergency. Yeah. My bad. Tell about club. the book club. Okay, so the book club started about a few weeks ago. Uh-huh. It is with me, Will Derbyshire, Connor Franta, my brother Kevin, and now Mike Sheffer. I'm not one of the founding members. I'm obsessed with that group of young gentlemen. It's a great like, group. Like, seriously. I was honored to be invited. Better. Yeah. It, it was Connor's idea originally, and then we all decided on doing... We wanted to do an easy, quick page turner just uh-huh. to get the vibes going. Sometimes, like, after you've been in a totally. reading slump, and especially if you're doing a book club, make it easy for everybody. And I went with The Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. Have you read it? No, but I've... Is that the one with the two rings on the cover? Yes. Uh, yeah, and a little yeah. bit of blood yes, splatter. Yes, a little bit of blood. And yeah. you don't know who killed who. It's a big whodunit. Uh-huh. Big, good little thriller. Not as like smutty as I wanted it to be. Damn. But Book Talk was raving about it. And I thought it was very, very popular. But then I learned that it was a bit of like a social media like ploy to get the book popular. Ooh. Like she paid for a bunch of ads to get it buzzed around. Uh, it's pretty brilliant. To do an influencer campaign for a book? Yeah. I mean, once you're on Book Talk, like, you're set for life. Yeah. But Geneva Rose is funny. She's like a 
funny author. She does like during her meet and greet, she makes like TikToks and like when she's answering questions, she gets her fans to like ask her like mean questions. I will say I'm I'm not too upset that I missed the first How book was of the book, book Club. I didn't read that one. I joined after that. I was uh, the second round. I loved the ride, but looking back, eh. It was a bit like fast food, totally. you know? It tastes good in the moment, but after it, you just feel fatigued. I feel like that's most thrillers. You uh, love the ride, but when you're looking back You were on just it. talking about this on, I can't remember if it was your Snapchat or your Instagram, or maybe it was a TikTok. Uh-huh. You felt that way about, was it the housemaid? It was the housemaid. Yes, and you just... I was just like, I mean, I was entertained, but... Looking back, I was like, I probably wouldn't choose to read that again. Do you think normally in a mystery or a thriller, you know, you, after you've read so many, you start to think like it? Do you usually get it right who you think it is? Yes, yeah. I do, because I've read so, so many, and they all follow the same formula, Huh? except for the good ones. The good uh, ones kind of break break that formula, and the, the housemaid just followed it to a T. I'm surprised. Are you in a book club at all? Yes, with my friends from high school. Okay. Yeah. Group and chat? Group chat. And then you and do a FaceTime. Face yeah. A group FaceTime. You all get on. Everyone just discuss. Exactly. Do, now, do you guys ever do any fun things in your book club? Like when we were reading A Perfect Marriage, after we got through like the first 50 pages, we would start casting who we thought in our mind. So when you read a book, are you just in visualizing these fictional versions of these characters in their mind? Or do you like to cast Hollywood actors for each of the characters? If it's a book that's already had a movie associated with it, those actors are in my head. Yes. But otherwise, I think I'm not picturing anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's... Have you seen the, the picture meme where it's like, when you envision an apple? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Explain. Why don't we pull it up, Matt? What is, we have wait, when you envision it, what do I Google? Just type in, like, uh, thinking apple uh, In your image. mind? Yeah. Oh, this like is... this. Some people say that they can't visually see things right. in their head. So open one of those. Oh, up. so this oh, is on oh, this... I've seen that. Yeah. Where Where do you think you fall on that I, scale? I think right smack in the middle. Smack in the middle. So like I'm not see... seeing a, a HD apple. Oh. But I'm seeing like a blob of, of an outline of an apple. You can't see like the sticker. I'm not and seeing read, high definition. You can't read the text. Matt, what do you see? On the I apple I'm scale? A to- I'm number one. <laughs> yeah, I'm a me high, too. High def apple, but I can't illustrate that to you on a piece of paper that's too skill, accurately though. that's a different skill like being able to draw is a different skill i actually don't think i'm seeing i don't know if i'm seeing anything or not i'm getting confusing myself huh maybe you do have that condition where you can't visualize <laughs> things i, I think like, i'm just thinking of oh, an apple so some people who have this condition say so think I don't know of a beach a, i don't know if Can it's you? a condition i think it's just, <laughs> just I, it's like asparagus pee kind of like some people it's called mind blindness it's called aphantasia okay is what they're saying it's the inability to visualize mental images okay. like mariah a co-host on unfiltered she says for her if you say think of a beach she has to think of a beach that she's been to she can't think of like a generic beach uh-huh. like a clip art image of a beach that's what i see you see clip art yeah, in a way, where it's all white, and then the middle is just a little beach, maybe a little palm tree and a beach ball. Okay, if I say the word banana, what comes into your brain? I'm getting like a <laughs> millisecond of a vague banana, is and it then the I letters? think it's gone. Are you seeing the letters no, B-A-N-A? I'm, I don't know if I, I'm like, think I'm gaslighting myself into thinking that I can see something. But I don't know. I think if I'm having this much of a hard time, <laughs> then I'm probably not. Then I'm probably not seeing anything. Huh. What does that mean about me? Like, do you think people that have this are like less intelligent? No, I just no. think you think differently than other people. But it might be why you're able I to access so- comedy so easily. Is because that part of your brain is working that overtime. Was kind of like a right, left. But brain also, I think yeah. like people who have this whole mind blindness thing, they're not like obviously it's black. I'm seeing black, but I'm envisioning it. If that makes sense, I'm, like people want it yes, to be super, that's super what I'm, literal. I'm seeing black, but also I daydream nonstop. So now I'm like, what am I seeing? What am I doing there? W- what's happening? <laughs> I think I'm just telling stories. I, I'm like, I don't know. I, I, I'm actually getting stressed out. Okay, that's okay. We can change <laughs> topics. Brooke. We'll be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor, Uncommon Goods. It is officially time to kickstart your holiday shopping, but there is no cause for panic. Uncommon Goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you're shopping for your mom, dad, teenagers, in-laws, or even your best friends, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they want. And we love buying from Uncommon Goods. We're going to maybe decorate the set a little bit with some stuff from there. Got some stuff for the house. It's 
tr- truly you have to go to the website and check out what they got because when you shop at uncommon goods you're supporting artists and small independent businesses their fine products are often made in small batches so shop now before they sell out this holiday season uncommon goods also looks for products that are of high quality unique and often handmade or made in the u.s they have the most meaningful and out of the ordinary gifts anywhere from art and jewelry to kitchen, home, and bar, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone. Not the same lackluster gifts you could find just anywhere. Uncommon experiences are more than just virtual classes. They're unexpected opportunities to have fun and connect in new ways from tarot card reading, romantic map making, cooking and mixology classes, and so much more. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give back $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They have donated more than $2.5 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, Go to uncommongoods.com slash hoot. That's uncommongoods.com slash hoot for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods. We're We're all all out out of of the the ordinary. ordinary. And now back to the episode. Tons of questions for the okay. Brooke and Connor podcast. Okay. Um, as you know, I'm a moderator of the BNC of family online. Um, I don't know if I've been fulfilling my moderating duties that well. Me neither, Matt. Should I? Am I see, there's so many member requests that come through, and I don't know, is that my job to no, be going Matt, through and approving people? Matt, you do as little or as much as you want. I do ban some posts. Okay. Ones that are like people trying to sell things. Uh, that's, thank you. That for... aren't relevant to the conversation that is you. Brooke Have there been any Connor. like spammers saying like, "Hey, this is Brooks. Send me a Venmo request and all." Like people trying to. No, but I feel like that's how you know you've made it. Is when people are impersonating yeah. you for money. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Pre- Have you had a fake Instagram account made of you? No, which Where is like, kind of insulting. Please report that. Like it happens to like people with three hundred followers too. <laughs> did that's you? True. Did you ever have anybody like catfish your entire hometown? A few. A few. Where there was <laughs> like, was it actually, would be this yes. cute person. They would start friending everybody in your social group and they would say, hey, I'm mm-hmm. moving to this town. I'm going to be going to the school next year. And everybody starts DMing them, talking to them. Matt, huh. I was actually in a relationship with one of them. <gasps> no way. Well, um, by, when I say relationship, I mean like my boyfriend for three days. And it was actually, it was. Looking back, like, I always say, like, I had, like, such a great middle school and high school upbringing. My school was, like, so tolerant and anti-bullying. And then when I look back, I'm like, maybe I was, like, a little bit bullied sometimes. Because the boys in my grade made a fake Facebook page for the cousin, pretending to be the cousin of a boy I had a crush on. And so they face smashed his face (gasps) with the skateboarder Ryan Sheckler. Whoa! To make, an, a, new to make an, a morph, so to make a new deep-faked. person that looked like my crush, but was actually a mix of him and Ryan was it Chuckler. only one picture though, or did they yes. face smash multiple yes, pictures? Yes, this was a point in time where it was like I didn't know what catfishing was. Like I didn't know that was even a thing that people did yet. Yeah, I think I was in seventh grade, and like Facebook just, huh? Or at least everybody in my grade just and so kind what, of got they a Facebook. Message you and said, "Hey, I'm this guy's cousin." Yes, I'm I'm this guy's cousin. Like I. I've heard so much about you, and like you seem really fun. I'd love to get to know you, and then we got to know each other for like eight seconds, now, and then he was conf- like, "I want to be your boyfriend." But this was like conflicting for you because his cousin, though you had a crush on, right? Right, but I was I was happy to move on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you ever tell his the cousin, the original guy you had a crush on, that you had been messaging his? He was in on it. Oh, Brooke, this is cruel. I know, right? Oh no, this is like full blown bullying. And then they were like, ha ha ha, and then I was like, oh ha ha ha. And then now I look back and I'm like, that's not funny. Uh uh-uh. uh. At all. And then sometimes on Facebook, like at that time of year, whenever I was talking to that man, because I made statuses about him being my boyfriend, of course, I'll get like 15 years ago, you. Oh. <laughs> and I don't have the heart to delete it. I don't have the heart to delete what it. What was the status? Like, hey, I can't wait to see Just like his name, heart, 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 heart. <laughs> That is so upsetting. <laughs> you I'm should so like, sorry that happened You should to you. call them up and confront them about how much you haven't gotten over it. Maybe. Do you know what they're doing But now? I would not like to give them the satisfaction. <laughs> Are they still living in your hometown? No. You know what? I w- a lot of the um, boys from my grade that I liked and like did not like me back, I would hope that like they're not doing 
well. Not that yeah. I hope they're not doing well, but I hope that I'm more successful than them. Yeah, no, Spite's a um, great quality. They are all super successful and still handsome, so that's oh. awesome. Yeah. I have a similar story to that that like scarred me for life that I've never oh, gotten over it. Not. So there was a girl I had a crush on, and this was middle school, so I think it was around seventh grade, which is just the worst year when you're dealing with crushes and whatnot. So I had a big crush on her. My cousin came and visited me for, I think it was around Thanksgiving or Christmas. So he was the cool out-of-towner. Mm-hmm. We then go hang out with my friends, and I'm already telling him ahead of time, hey, I have a crush on this girl, blah, 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 blah. We have a fun night hanging out with all of them. Then the girls decide to call us the next day, and the girl I had a crush on says, hey, I have a really big crush, and I'm <gasps> so excited because I think oh it's God, me. Oh, no. Man, but she's I'm not so wanting sorry. to reveal it, and then and I remember being on the other line so confused. And then they finally open up to me. Well, no, Matt, it's not you. It's your cousin. And they had a crush on my cousin. Nick. Oh, Matt. No, it was Tyler. Oh. Was Do Tyler. I know Tyler? Was he at the wedding? Uh, yes, he was at the wedding. But he wasn't one of my groomsmen. But he was at my because bachelor party. Because of that? <laughs> no, not because of that. It, I think for that was just because he already had a wedding and I just wanted to lighten the load. But, yeah, I never got That's over hard. that. hard. That's when, when someone starts crushing on your cousin because I'm like you guys aren't going right. to have a relationship you guys live across the country yeah. why can't you be interested in did me did you tell Tyler I would have kept took that to my grave I remember us being around the phone and it was like on speaker and then it was yeah. finally yeah. she said it it was him uh-huh. and I like left the room oh Matt I'm so sorry. It's okay, bro. You didn't Brooke. deserve that. No, I'm happily married now. That's true. That's right. That's our, true. our good friend Sally Dar, I she's really good to talk to about dating stuff. Yeah. And she gave me a list of mantras. I'm gonna give you a mantra, Matt. Oh, please. This is one of Sally Dar's. I do not want what doesn't want me. Facts. So if you didn't if your cousin was like, Why can't you like me instead? For all those folks out there who may be looking for love. Right. I do not want what doesn't want me. I understand that. And like of course it makes sense. <laughs> But unfortunately, I think I only want what doesn't want me. Huh. Do you like the chase? It's not even that. I think it's more of like a... So. (laughs) (laughs) She's thinking about an apple again. (laughs) Self-preservation thing. Because it's like, okay, if this person's not going to like me back, like nothing bad can happen. Hmm. You know? I think that's why I only like like celebrities. Because it's like I will never even see them. Yeah. And so I can't get hurt. Oh, this was my other one. Don't get upset or angry. Just get turned off. Okay. Oh, sure. These are all great in theory, but like, I don't know how to rewire my brain. I know. Have you heard the... Just put it out there for the universe uh, yeah. in case it helps someone. Yeah. I saw a TikTok recently of a guy who was sharing this to women or offering the dating advice to determine if a guy is interested in you or not. If he's reacting to your Instagram stories, he likes you. What do you mean by reacting? There's three different ways to interact with an Instagram story. Can we rank them? Even uh, I think it's just like a, a like, so cla- there, well, there's, heart. There's three things. There's the little heart that yeah. you can just tap, which puts but you, you can't at the do top. A, that. But you, that's like if you're sending someone stuff in the DM, right? No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, but you, no, no, no. I thought it's you always can been just emojis. Click the heart if you're looking at someone's story. Oh my gosh, do I not know how to it, do this? If you press the little heart next to the send button. That sends what oh, I don't have a story up right now, but what it does is oh look Patricia, um, it will send on when you view your story the people that hearted it generally appear at the top, and it just has a little heart next to their name. I think that's the lowest tier of I interaction. Agree. I agree. Okay, but if he's liking it, he likes you. I think the I think that's it, dangerous to assume. Yeah, but I, then I again, think, I if. I'm a guy who I like supporting my female friends, right. so... Do you hit that heart button, or are you never hitting that heart button? Buddy, I've been sending emojis the whole time. I'm doing, that's the, the, I'm doing the hard press, oh, that's and then a, doing okay. like a clap, that's the second hard tier. eyes. Like swipe up and send one of these? Yes, that's what I do all the time. I never think about sending the heart. Oh, I love... I, I think the heart is like a good for friends, that yeah. you're just like, hey, I, I, I like this. I, I see it. I acknowledge it. Love yes. what you're doing. <laughs> Not typing anything out right now. <laughs> <laughs> That is exactly what the heart is used for. Uh-huh. Although I do think people use the heart to like flirt and breadcrumb a little bit, uh-huh. which I don't think is good. What? I'm listening to oh, you, oh. and I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking at the same time. Um, and then I think the reactions are for like established relationships. Like you're not going to win someone over by reacting. That's just like it's a little weak. If you want, if you want someone to like you, you got to just go for the message. I feel like when I react to things like with an emoji, it's ironic usually. Yes. It's like it's or either funny. like crying, laughing face like that I'm not uh-huh. using seriously <laughs> or like fire emoji that I'm like not using seriously, you know? 
I don't feel like I'm ever like really like fire, damn, like hot, hot, hot. Yeah, oh, like right, right, you know? right. But Sometimes I, though, yeah. If someone has happened to look particularly good, you can send them a little fire emoji. You don't do that though. I do, but it's also not like if I truly like want them to know that I think they look awesome, I'll respond. Mm. Whereas the fire is kind of just like I don't and these know. Are like almost, ta- these are guys. These are guys. No, I'm talking about it, everyone. Oh, everybody. Because I don't. I usually don't speak to. Like, if I'm interested in a guy, I won't be engaging. Ah, interesting. Yeah. At all. Unless I've already been engaged with. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm never putting out. You never just first. like would just want to shoot your shot just to see. No, Matt. Okay. You've never <laughs> DM'd a, a cold approach. No. Never met. Haven't met. Maybe have a mutual. Hey. Little hey. Never. In a million years, would I do that? Could you? If would you? Like you can't. I think maybe like the older I get and the more dire the circumstances <laughs> become, <laughs> it could become a possibility. Huh? But for now, I don't. I'm just not that. Have kind of you person. ever experienced the rush of like you've been interested in somebody, or you come across their profile and then you go to it and then you click messages and they've actually have DM'd you? Yes. That's kind oh, of a that's good feeling. feeling. Yeah. That's yeah. a good feeling. And yeah. then do you... Okay, now, if you're interested in okay. them, Brooke, and you go to... And it's not even a follow back. It's not that. It's just the message. And it's there. They DM'd you. Do you react to that? Engage. Do and you engage? But it's an old message? Yeah, like it made, 2019, it, maybe. <laughs> okay, we want to go... Yeah. Or 2020. No. Oh. Hmm. But what if he just like parted it and got out of there? Because then that acknowledges the fact that I'm just like looking at his profile, clicking messages. Yeah, but it, this is the world. Like he 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 put out a seed. Right. You're just gonna water it. Why would why but would I, you water it? I feel like the it's past its prime of watering. Hmm. Maybe mm. but statute you don't of know. limitations. Are you a lowercase texter? No. No, you're uppercase yeah. all the time. Oh, commas, full punctuation. All I, of oh, it. I'm a big fan of periods. Okay. But almost in an ironic way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, you know, Brooke, she uses grammar ironically. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, oh, but, okay. Periods, but no ellipses, exclamation points at all? Exclamations. With people that, I feel like with my best friends, I'm using periods. Okay. What like, we, as kind of, like, I would use that with you guys, like, I don't know, like, if you were like, are you free today? I'd just say, yes, period. Because oh, it's kind of like, I yeah, think it's like dramatic. a little bit. Oh, yes. I like, also can hear you know, things in your voice you know, yeah. so well. You've like, you well, have like a very, you say, I think oh, that gets Mike. the dryness across the period. Now, if a guy is using all lowercase, do you like that or no? I think I'm not reading into that too much. Okay. I've been, I've been told it's a red flag now. It used to be cool. And now, now I'm sensing that this is a little strange to do all lowercase. I, think I just, I would stick to just normal uppercase letters they're yeah. there for a reason it's one of they the first things reason. matt made me do when i moved here is go lowercase yeah, yeah he said you he said you can't be texting people i like know this. that was a phase but yeah. i think it's over it's over now it's over man are you doing lowercase i always do lowercase Same. oh matt i never I, picked up see i don't pick up on it it softens like the formality of i don't I agree. know and no. it always seems like you're in the middle of a conversation too like the the capital and the full punctuation mm-hmm. makes it feel like this is an exchange. We are starting it at, at, versus just like, okay. hey, oh, I was thinking about this, whatever. And it's like kind of a constant dialogue. Uh-huh. But maybe so it's So you time. on the dating apps, are you, you, are you now back on uppercase? No, I'm not. But I'm, I feel like I need to make the shift because it more than once I've been told, like, why are you typing in lowercase? Mm-hmm. This is strange. I think you strange. should mirror whoever it is you're talking to Good if point, this Matt. is a dating app thing Good going point. on. Hmm. If you're just talking to friends, who cares? Yeah, no, I, I, I like the aesthetic of it. As okay. Well. You know what? All that matters is if you like it. Okay. Thanks, Brooke. So and the validating. right girl will, will like your lowercase. Thank you, Brooke. Yeah. You know, Steve Jobs did not believe in the uppercase at all. He only wrote in lowercase. Really? Shout out to Steve Jobs getting mentioned two times on this podcast. My yeah. science teacher, who once choked me up against a wall and threw a marker at me, would. Can we start that? That happened. Back? Wait. Hold- back after a quick word from today's sponsor, Rocket Money, that- our favorite. Love Rocket Money. I love Rocket Money so much. I use Rocket Money every day this past holiday break. I was talking about Rocket Money to everybody I knew that I was sitting around with during Thanksgiving dinner. It really is one of the best apps. It's changed my life um, since I downloaded it. It's such a great way to know what you're spending, help cancel subscriptions, um, subscriptions I forgot about, and sometimes I have duplicated. Like I have two Disney Plus accounts I didn't realize. Um, So, yeah. 
truly, truly love Rocket Money, and we can't recommend it enough. So yeah, you may be one of those people who think that your subscriptions are draining your wallet. And guys, did you know that the average person has around 12 subscriptions, and they might not even remember subscribing to half of those. So if you have no idea how much money you're spending each month, you need Rocket Money. It is this great app that tracks all of your expenses, so you know exactly where your money is going. Now, Matt, did you know that over 80% of people have subscriptions that they've forgotten about. Uh, yes, I have, and I've never been able to shake that out of my mind. <laughs> Think about how many free trials you or anyone has subscribed to that they probably never canceled. That's why we are such big fans of Rocket Money, because there's a subscription for everything these days, from streaming services to fitness programs, and sometimes it feels impossible to keep tabs on what you're paying for every month. But that's why we are such huge fans of Rocket Money. Yeah, and once again, Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Most people think they're spending $80 on their subscriptions, when in reality, that number is closer to $200. When you're signed up for so many things, like streaming services for a show that you watched one time or a free trial for a delivery that you don't really use, it's so easy to lose track of what you're paying for. And what I also love is that Rocket Money can even negotiate to lower your bills for you, up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money also lets you monitor all your expenses in one place, which is my favorite favorite feature. It recommends custom budgets based on your spending, and they'll even send you a notification when you reach your spending limits. It's a great way to keep yourself accountable. And with over 3 million users and counting Rocket Money, customers have saved an average of $722 a year. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash hoot. Once again, that is rocketmoney.com slash hoot, rocketmoney.com slash hoot. Visit the link, download Rocket Money, use our link, and you will thank us. Now back to the episode. Oh, tell me about, yeah, no, tell I, me. I was just like, you know, a fucking wise, wise guy kid. I'm always talking out. That's what they call it, calling out in the middle of class, cracking jokes. This guy was, I think he was like a, he was a Korean war vet. So he was like in his mid-60s te teaching science to a bunch of ratty little kids. And I guess one day he just fucking snapped. And I was like making jokes with my friends and he jumped over the desk I stood up, and then he like put his hand on my neck and like, put me up against the wall and said, "You shut the fuck up in my class." Da, 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 da. And I was just like, I was like laughing because I thought it was fucking insane. And then that's like a fi like a beyond fireable offense. It was a private Jewish school, and what I've come to learn is like the public school system has a little bit better of a vetting process for teachers. Right. Private school is a private institution. You don't need to have a degree. You don't. Need to, I mean, I might be wrong, and this might have changed. But no, the you're school right. that I went to, like. The teachers were not qualified. They were all psychopaths. Typically, though, the hiring committee is pretty, especially if it's a private school and parents are paying a lot of money. Like the it wasn't a good private school. Okay. It was just a it was it just a Jewish. And school. you didn't want to report it because you thought by getting choked up against a wall, no, it, it was a better punishment than. Oh, you your didn't parents. report it. No, I didn't report when my teacher did that to me. I didn't report it because I was like, "Woo, I don't have detention. I'm not going to the principal's office. This just happened between us." I don't want to tell anybody. <laughs> and it wasn't until I was like a full-blown adult where I realized that was very weird. Oh yeah. my God, that's really bad. He I'm used sorry to always, that happened to you. At least like once a week, he would also throw the markers at me because like he'd be writing on the board and I'd be like, that's not how you spell science. I've reported science. much less. Uh, from I, my my parents told me they just said, um, I mean, great parents, love them to death. But it was funny with what they said was like, this is just going to help you in life. You'll be able to deal with crazy people as you get older because there's a lot of crazy people out there. So, like, it's good you're learning how to deal with crazy people at a young age. And now I really do know how to deal with basically anybody. Right. Like, I don't get really flustered when I'm seeing crazy people because I've already seen it. And I feel like I have a pretty good... What would you do if your kids came home and told you that story? Oh, I'm going to school with a gun. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, with a gun? I think oh, it's my. a gun-free ca uh, campus. Well, though. I'm going to sneak it on and I'm going to blow this guy's brains out. You okay. don't touch my fucking kid. I, I, like, I would I'd be, commit a crime. I would be I press like, charges. horrified. Yeah. If Pressing a charges? Well, if it was a private school. No, I'm going after him in his bed at night. I probably shouldn't say I'm going to bring a gun to probably school. Not. Probably not, man. <laughs> probably not. This is a comedy podcast, folks. It's all jokes. Um... But if you're a kid out there and your teacher puts their hands on you, you probably should report it. For sure. Yeah. Um, but and why I brought him up, he wrote an all uppercase. And I Ooh. asked him why, and he said, because it's easier to read. He's like, I have bad handwriting, and if you write an all uppercase, it's easier to read. And I have terrible handwriting, and I always, when I'm like writing stuff, I try to write an all uppercase, and it does make it easier to read. Oh, 
I that just doesn't it doesn't it's like screaming all caps <laughs> like it just doesn't sit well when you're reading typed language yes but i think there's it's a little less harsh okay at handwriting do you have okay. pretty handwriting yes yeah, I feel and like i don't do. really like ever say flat out that i'm really good at something but i'm i have really good handwriting can you is it is it bubbly is it very does it look feminine is it I, I would say you would know that's a girl's handwriting for sure okay god i miss yeah. the days when you can like recognize someone's handwriting like in your uh-huh. class you just know 20 people's handwriting you're like that's elliot's that's matt's oh, that's yeah. 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 my Mom, friend yeah. brian hummel had the best handwriting Ugh. it was just perfection patrick has amazing handwriting does he yes like uh, it, I've never seen anything like it. That would be a fun <laughs> game where everyone has to like submit their handwriting, and you have to like blindly uh-huh. guess whose handwriting is whose. Because I think sometimes people do look like their handwriting, or their handwriting looks like them in yeah. a way. It's like and dogs. Is, you can definitely. I mean, I don't know if this is okay to say, but like I feel like you can kind of tell male writing versus female handwriting. That's, you're is worried that okay about that say? instead yeah. of the gun. <laughs> 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 yeah, that. Yes, exactly. I agree. Yeah. But sometimes if it's like agnostic and it's just so fucking clean that you can't tell. That's... And sometimes you can tell if writing, though, is like written by a woman, too. Like the way the the word choice the, that they use. Yes. Like people always say that about the John Bonet Ramsey case when there's the ransom note that was found. Because, you know, some people are convinced the parents did it. Some people are convinced that the brother did it. Mm-hmm. But they wrote this note and it was apparently by the kidnapper. And it starts off saying, listen carefully, John. We <gasps> represent a small foreign faction of people who do not particularly like you. Like... That's like, like that's woman. like a, that's a that's a mom right yes. that. <laughs> that's not some dude who's uh yeah that's not a 25 year old disgruntled man yeah from a small foreign faction well you know in the FBI they have specialists that are handwriting expertise uh, like, experts yeah vocabulary like they can analyze all that and figure out huh. can you Pro- write via profile can you write in cursive very pretty no I can't write in cursive at all do they teach you cursive at all growing up like very briefly in like first grade and then never a follow-up i know it's kind of the worst when you get like letters written by like older people and it's all in cursive you're just like i did write in cursive but it's not like legible what, it's not no it's not like what cursive is it's mine not, like, looks like the handbook that they gave you like when you had to trace over like cursive mine yeah. looks just like mine just squiggly letters like i go rogue like it's not like textbook cursive if they ever show cursive in a movie i feel like they should put subtitles on the screen so i, I can read it because i can never ever read what i it can't says. either mm-hmm I wonder if there's an app that will just do that for you. I bet there is. Because like, if I get a letter from like an aunt or something and it's written in cursive, I just can't read it. It I, takes I, me a very long time. I, if I get something in cursive, I take a picture of it, I send it to my mom, and I say, can you tell me what this Transcribe. says? Transcribe. Which is kind of nuts. That yeah. The English language is something I can't read, but I didn't have the best education. Can we talk about your new show? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Gosh. How, how long has the delay been? So long. I know. We It was supposed to come out in July... Like the week the strike started, right? The week the strike started, basically, and then we put it on pause because I, I just talk about. Do you already have shows. episodes done in the vault, and then when it is launched, you're going to release those episodes? I, or do you have yeah. to revamp? I recorded three. One of them I'm just going to toss because it's like yeah, well, wasn't that good anyway. Legs, and, yeah. and then two were with guests, so I'll keep those. But I think I'll release just like a new one first. But I don't even know yet. I still have it's coming out in two months. So What's the I still name have of it again? Obsessed. Obsessed. Such yeah. a great name. Obsessed with Brooke Averick. I love when a title works both ways. Thank you, Mike. It's brilliant. I'm excited. I to have think it. about that title probably once a day. Oh my god, that means the world. I can't wait for you both to come on. I'm so. Oh, oh we would love to. Oh yeah. Now, what is the structure? Or you don't have to say too much, but I know that it is about like uh-huh. your obsessions. Do you spotlight the fans' obsessions and what? they want to talk about and you navigate that or do you just dump on whatever you want to talk about and hope they vibe with it i think it's going to be a mix of all like the two episodes that i recorded one who's what was with um a fellow creator that i think everyone will be really excited about that also shares this kind of obsessive personality and so we just kind of talked about like the nature of being obsessed and like what we're obsessed with and then the next one was about a very specific topic okay. that me and this person were obsessed with in the past so it'll be like a mix of everything i'm gonna do like a sports episode with my brother who will have to teach me about sports and he's obsessed with sports so that will be me learning <laughs> and a lot of caffeine to stay awake probably uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so i'll be learning well, that'll be perfect yeah would, would, does noah follow all the sports 
Uh, I think so. Oh, wow. But I kind of just want to like learn. <laughs> I want to learn how to watch football. What? Oh, you don't even know how to watch football. I can't. Like, I truly have a mental block. Even the Taylor Swift dating the one guy is not convinced that doesn't, you to. No, no, not at all. Hmm. B- football is a beautiful game. Ooh, I've never heard it described as a beautiful game. I like it because it gives you enough time to think and it's exciting. It's like a movie unfolding because there's a lot of possibilities that can go on. Basketball, I get I'm like kind of whoop de doo. You're going uh-huh. back and forth two points, two points, and occasional three points and and in the spread of like if they're if the basketball team is way ahead and the other team's behind, good luck trying to get back up to the top. Okay. Football anything can happen. I don't know why I cannot figure it out. I've tried so many times. Yeah, I. It did take me a long time to figure out football. Uh huh. And I still don't. They they say things that I don't know what that means. Right. Scrimmage, yardage. I like, mean, even just like the basic concept, I can't grasp. I think it's kind of like when you're doing math homework at the kitchen table with your dad. It's that kind of like reaction. <laughs> That's that kind of reaction that I have. Uh, Matt, what do you think we would talk about on an episode of Obsessed? Or Brooke, do you select that for the guest? Oh, you are more than welcome to choose. But I figured yeah. that maybe you would come talk about like movies. Oh. I would love that. But the thing is, Mike, okay, here's the thing. We have a very different... Mike and I had two different childhoods. <laughs> okay. Mike was not watching Disney Channel. He was not watching Nickelodeon. There's all of these things that I was really into as a child. What were you watching if not those? I wasn't like really... Like PBS? Uh, I just wasn't watching that much TV. Okay. I had I had my block What of, were like, you doing? Going outside. Okay. Having a childhood, as yeah. I like to call it. Matt was... Download. I, I like Disney Channel was it's not something I ever saw. So Matt has a whole reference. Wow. I'm a huge That's Disney fine. Channel original movies. But we can like, talk about era. We can talk about like adult movies. Like That's great to have Stanley different. Kubrick yeah. And you know, good totally. directors David Lynch. Of and, course. Well, we'll have to assign Brooke some homework before, yeah. oh, so you she's will. like can familiarize herself with whatever it is we want to geek I'm out excited. about. I am yeah. on Letterbox now, so I follow, okay. I follow Matt on Letterbox. Okay, I need He's, to do that. I yeah. need to get you're on. not on Letterbox. I made an account and rated like three movies and then gave up. Have you followed Rachel Sennett on Letterbox? No, she's really good at Letterbox. Okay. Or she writes like really funny reviews. Okay, I or she's always it. at the top of it. I need to get it. I wish people liked Goodreads the way that they like Letterbox. Goodreads, Goodreads is a horrible app. I just got back oh, wait you agree goodreads is a horrible app. it is i think it was probably like the first app and it's never been updated is, okay is there anybody <laughs> on goodreads that's a good follow like you like their taste no like a good influence because I that's what i my love friends. what i love about letterbox is following someone who i think i have similar yeah. taste to and if they say something is good i'm gonna go right. see it let a uh, goodreads though you're dealing with a huge board of people reading these books. And the interface is so impossible to navigate that like, even if there was somebody who you would want to follow, you can't figure out how to follow them. How many books have you logged onto your Goodreads? Do you think you've logged in every single book that you've ever read? I think so. It's like in the <gasps> 600s or something. Wow. But I've literally like, logged children's books. Yeah. That, see, that counts. Like Dr. Uh-huh. I, I logged in yeah. every letterbox or every movie I've ever seen. Uh-huh. And I'm at like 2,000. Uh-huh. And I counted all the kids' yeah. movies as well. And I did like some books from when I was teaching, like my favorite kids' books from then, from that mm. time. So it's not all like... Did you read Bailey books. School Kids growing up? No. You never read the Bailey School Kids? No. Bailey School Kids was... It was kind of like your first chapter book series. It was about these kids who went to this like crazy school where uh, their teachers were monsters. Like it would be like vampires don't teach oh, math that- class or leprechauns don't teach gym. Werewolves, werewolf, werewolves aren't summer camp counselors. Is that the cover that's like a composition notebook? Uh, mm, I, I think it's Junie B. Else. Jones. No, Junie B. Jones is different. I don't know what I'm thinking of, but I love Junie B. Jones. It's kind of like a Scooby-Doo style okay. where there's like a, a mysterious creature that they are convinced is haunting their town that's and then fun. it turns out to just be... It's oh. a great book. Oh, yeah. Um, and also a good one. Did you ever read uh, the Magic Treehouse yes. books by Mary Pope Osborne? I did Magic Treehouse. Animorphs? Junie B. Jones. Why is it any, not Animorphs? People need to be making that a show. Magic Treehouse? Yeah, that's a good point. I bet it has been made a show and it's probably horrible. <sighs> they need to be investing in it. Yeah. Um and Bailey School Kids read. Did you ever read the Boxcar Children? No, but I knew what that was. Is that from like the fifties? Kind of like or 80s. That the Hardy Boys. That's what my mom tried to get me to read. Oh, Hardy. that's from the fifties, I think. It's like two detective uh-huh. kids. Yeah, it was like Nancy Drew's like crushes. Oh, I love Nancy Drew. Were all Nancy Drew books like that good? I I loved them all, but I, I'm sure I don't know if they were good. Okay. <laughs> were you a Harriet the Spy Girl? 
Yeah. I love Harry the Spy. I love Harry the Spy. Me too. Michelle Trachtenberg has really been in some incredible pieces of film. That's the girl who played? That's Harriet. Played Harriet. Yeah, a nice princess. Yes. Yes. And she was also in Eurotrip. Oh, I haven't seen that. You've never seen Euro uh-uh. Trip? Oh, classic, classic teen movie. I don't think it holds up. Which one? Euro Trip. I can't imagine watching that in 2023. Scotty doesn't. Great. No. Yeah, that's Matt Damon singing that. I know, but I'm sure there's jokes in there that are just like, yeesh. I've never even heard of it. Oh, it's it was just like one of those, like, not another teen movie in, oh. in that era of just really i love all those harriet the spy though man rosie o'donnell uh-huh. in her and when they have to say goodbye uh-huh. to her because she gets fired uh-huh. i mean that's good the that's time good has come cinema. the walrus said to talk of many things okay i'm not like remembering it that much but <laughs> and also I the mom or wait it. jerry in succession is in uh when harriet the, or oh harriet the spy. what was she or she who was she <laughs> she's the mom in harriet oh, the spy my, oh jerry i can't picture her okay it's all good. But I love Jerry. Well, so when's the show coming out? January? January 26th. Okay. We're excited. Are we Upset. gonna have a Thank launch you. party? Maybe that could be fun. Can I feel like it? we did that. We went out to dinner with you. Yeah, and, we're uh, Brooke Connor. and Connor. We did something. Yeah. Oh, I'll plan something. That'll be fun, bro. Okay. Cool. Good PR. Yeah. Some Instagram stories. Yeah. Okay. Well, I already kind of started on this earlier, and pardon for people who got really excited if you were listening, but as you know, I'm the moderator of Brooke and Connor make a podcast, Facebook group, and I asked them some questions that they would like you to answer oh my god i missed that yeah i'm really i need to be more active on that page but it it like activates my imposter syndrome in a way that like i almost can't engage because you want to please everybody and it sucks like you can't yeah you can't get around to the mall do you think that it's because it's facebook and you see that there's like a real name and a face versus if it was like on reddit that too and then I don't know. I, ju- I don't know what is wrong with me, but nothing's wrong with you, Brooke. Okay. You're perfect just That's the way really you are. Sweet. Okay. Well, That's Sydney really sweet, Campbell like. wants to know if you could have one wealthy feature in your home, what would it be? She's. I've been binging selling Sunset and decided I would want either an indoor heated pool or a full temperature controlled wine cellar. Can I have an outdoor pool? Y- yeah, you can have an outdoor okay. pool. I already think though, if you're wealthy, I already have an outdoor pool. I think the I pool kind of comes to, with okay, a really nice okay. house. Is there anything like heated toilet seats, sauna, elevator in the house? Maybe just like a massive bathtub. There we go. Oh yeah. Yeah. With with jets? Yeah. Or do or do you with take jets. baths? Um no, cuz my bathtub is like s- disgusting. Yeah, if it's like a shower bath, <laughs> yeah, it's I'm a shower not bath. I'm not into it. <laughs> And then, like, for whatever reason, the amount of dirt that comes off of me every shower, <laughs> like, I can't, like, put my body in that willingly. I always, like, if when I do take a bath, I get so excited about the bath. And then when I'm in it, I'm like, oh, I should have brought, right. I should have brought a book. Oh, you know what? I should have brought a candle. Maybe I should just plug in my phone. And then that's I, why the hot tub yeah. is supreme. Oh, yeah. Mike has a hot tub. He's an inflatable one. Yeah. Are I you love a big, hot do you a hot tub I love gal? I hot tub. Well, Brooke, anytime you want to use a pool or a hot tub, you know, I you're know always where to welcome. Find you. I'll, I can make you a key even if you want, so you can just open the gate. Oh my God, Mike. I've been really please. addicted. <laughs> what are your weird addictions for this week? I, I kind of stole your My idea. weird addictions? Yeah, did you see that on my Snapchat no, story? No, I didn't. Oh, I was having anxiety about it. Oh, don't ever have anxiety. Because I was worried, like, is Brooke going to think that I'm just no. like, copying her? Oh, this week? Like, the things I'm hyperfixating on? Hi- hyperfixated, yeah. Okay. She always has a fun little list. Or your new personality for the my week? My new personality. Right now, I'm obsessed with chopped salads. Chopped salads? <laughs> <laughs> Ordering a chopped salad nope, or making, making it. it? Okay. So... Because I was at my grandparents in Florida, and they have, they're in, like, a community. And at the clubhouse, they chop up the salads so finely that it's almost like a soup uh-huh. and so i got a salad chopper for cyber monday what is a salad chopper is it's it not kind just of a like knife a, it's, it's like, like a blade oh that the you kind of roll blade? it's like a, almost like a pizza roller but huge like you just roll it on your it's salad like a, it's like the bottom of a rocking chair but with blades on that it. is an option but that's not the one i got oh, okay, mine is more okay. like a pizza roller blade and Ooh. we're just sitting on the counter chopping for chopping hours. chopping chopping what and are we are we planning like i'm gonna make so much chopped salad that this is gonna cover me for the next few days or are you having it just in one sitting in one sitting and now i'm already tired of it though okay. but i had two i it was really fun while it lasted how many salads did you make two you oh so it was a very short-lived made two obsession. salads um one last night one today and, and now, now we're over it a little bit, but I'll still I'll finish all my ingredients. Okay. Are you a good like leftover keeper eating your leftovers, or do you get disgusted by something just sitting in your refrigerator if it's been like even more than a day? Do you I ever get around to love stuff? Love leftovers from like a restaurant or yes. stuff I ordered when out. Like, like I like it even better than when it comes. Okay. 
but like I'm horrible at food shopping. Like I just never get the right amount. So much expires. I never want to eat what I order or what I buy. I'm, I'm I think really this is like shopper. where that humane thing will come in as you go to the grocery store and you'd be like, just tell me what I need to buy. Like yeah. you plug in uh-huh. what you want to eat for the week and it'll be like, remember to buy this, remember to buy yeah. this. I love using AI for like the leftovers of something that you made, meaning like the stuff that you didn't get around to fully leftover ingredients yeah so like if asking you, uh, ai yeah asking ai so being like i like say i, I a used half a half onion. pound of italian sausage last night making some pasta but i go in the ai and go i have another half of uh sausage i have this type of pasta i have all the herbs and spices and like half a pint of cream and go what can i make and it will spit out a whole recipe of something you can make with those ingredients did you know it can do that with knitting really it can give you a knitting pattern and it's on point I've heard, so I've heard. What do you? What are the the ladies at the knitting tree were talking last time I was there at crochet class, and they were saying that she plugged in um, a sweater that she wanted in the dimensions um, into chat. GP, is it GPT or GPT? GT. GPT. Is she plugged it into chat GPT and it spit out a sweater and it was going lovely for her so far? Wow! Isn't that crazy? That's so sick. Maybe I should do that yeah. instead of annoying Sally Dar really anytime fun. I run into issues. That could be really I need fun. to get back into knitting, Brooke. Me too. I, I, it's been. I honestly haven't knitted in a year. A I went year? the I went the whole year without picking it up. Yeah, also, it's been a very engaged. busy, uh, yeah. busy year. But you've had a year. Yeah, I've only done the front panel of a sweater. Now I just got to do the back panel. Yeah, I'm not feeling inspired either. It, maybe maybe 2024 is the resurfacing the, of the knitting club. I would love. Clubs. Yeah, I would love to get knitting club. Do you, back okay, do you think running. if somebody has a little knitting machine and they're just making beanies, are you cheating? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't call it knitting. Yeah. I would call it a diff- uh, maybe just like a different kind of fiber art. Spin- spinning? <laughs> fiber art. Yeah, maybe like fiber art spinning. Weaving? Is that weaving? Maybe, yeah, maybe more of a weaving. Hmm. You're just hacking it. Activity. It do- I mean, like, it is knitting in the sense that, like, I guess if you're in a rush and you have, I don't know. I'm very conflicted when I see. I think it I has see- value and, like, I think it's so cool and I would love to be able to do it. But I feel like knitting is with your hands. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And what are you knitting right now at the moment? Some like random sweater that I have no attachment to. Okay. But I need to knit another chicken. Oh, the chickens are adorable. Those are fun. You and Channing went to a class to learn how to knit Uh, a chicken. Is it easy to knit a chicken? No. I mean, now that I know how to do it, yes, but it was I learned a lot of new skills and they were pretty challenging. Fun. Like I wouldn't have been able to figure that out on my own. It's knitting, not crocheting. It's knitting. Hmm. And then additionally I went to a crochet class. To learn how to crochet. But we don't like crocheting. Um, it, there's something about it that is just not clicking. Hmm. Is it a superiority thing of like, I'm better than this? Or no, because I think thing? it's hard. Oh, can, it, I can, thought it was the easier can't one. Can't you crochet kind of with people one think hand? That. Can't you kind of crochet with one hand? You just like, you don't need, yeah, you don't need both hands in the way that you do for knitting. Like you're just using one yeah. tool, one crochet needle. But I don't, it's not as intuitive for me. Are you getting Connor anything for Christmas? Do you guys exchange gifts around this holiday season? We do exchange gifts, but it's like never really on a holiday or on a birthday. Okay. It's kind of just like, I saw this and I thought of you. Who gives better gifts, you or him? I gave him a really good gift. I knit him a tote bag. I was there that podcast. And that was a really good gift. But he's given me some things before that I've that have been good. <laughs> Can't think of them quite off the top of my head right now. Oh, he got me. You know what was really sweet that he got me once? From New York, he brought me back like an original script from an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Whoa. And that, that was a good gift. That's a sweet gift. That's really cool. Yeah. That's quite a sport. New season coming out. I'm so excited. February, I think. I'm so excited. Me too. Is it the last one? They say everyone's okay. the last one. He's also like 77 seven years old or something. It's fucking nuts how old he is. He And he seems to be reverse aging. He really does. Yeah. I mean, he's got a lot of money. I think it makes life a little bit right. easier. Sure, And yes. he lives in Brentwood or wherever right. he lives. Easy living, yeah. quiet. That's true. You know. That's true. Uh, Brooke, what are your thoughts on the ballad of songbirds and snakes? Oh, my God. Thanks for asking, Matt. I saw it last night. First of all, I read that when it came out. Right. In 2019 or 2020. And this is like the prequel to The Hunger Games. This is the prequel to The Hunger Games. It's the story of President Snow during the 10th annual Hunger Games. Oh, yes. so it's not the first Hunger Games. No, it's Games. the 10th, and that's like the Hunger Games that kind of like 
when it started getting controversial like no like that's the first <laughs> <laughs> kind of spruced up a bit like that was the first year they had mentors so president snow was a mentor oh and that he was like one of the first ones and then it was the first year that they did like betting and like sponsorships and stuff and those were all of his ideas cuz he was a student are and they that was setting like a this one okay so is this whole movie just the the book the it's first the book. book is there another one going to come out or are they I, setting the movie up for more I don't think so. I think it was pretty much like this is how President Snow became to be the way he is. Okay. And this is the whole story. It's like story a villain of that. origin story, exactly. kind of the Cruella. Exactly. But I loved the book, and a lot of people didn't like the book. Okay. But I loved it, and so I really like the movie too. I think they should make 10 Hunger Games. I, Give me more I games. Cannot get I cannot Well, my only complaint with Hunger Games is I love the first one, second one's getting good, and then a rebellion happens to stop the Hunger Games. You. I got hooked That's because why they of the game. go back. But you know what I was actually kind of freaking out about yesterday? Tell me. Of course, when you're watching The Hunger Games, you're like, oh my God, like I can't, like this is so sick. Like it's, <laughs> it's sick, like what this society <laughs> has become. And then you kind of take a step back and you're like, oh my God, like you're a part of it. Like you are going to the theater to watch The Hunger Games. Yes. It is like we are participating in The Hunger Games, but they are just actors and you're not actually going to the theater to see people. Yeah, it's not anywhere nearly as, I think as bad Beast as the Hunger more, Games, but like it Mr. is yeah. something yeah. to think about. I think Mr. Beast's content is a little bit more like that, because it's actually people f- trying to like win money by doing insane things, yeah. like keeping their hand on a car or whatever, and there's only one, one way that ends up. Right. Which, you know. Do you identify with a district more than another district? Do I you mean, know I'm sure the- everyone wants to think they're like in District 12, like yeah. a Katniss of sorts. Mm-hmm. Is that like the Gryffindor of... Well, they're kind of like the, the miners, they're right? They're just kind of like the salt of the earth. Like That's not the right word. <laughs> yeah. That's not the right... Like, uh, what is, like, okay, salt of the earth. I think that's just like a good person. What does that mean? What it, yeah, like... Like, uh, like cream of the crop, like cream of the crop, but more of like no, emotionally I don't speaking, like they're the salt of the earth. Like oh, they're just a gem. The, what's the cream of the crop? Like the best of the best. But why is it the cream? Okay. I don't know. Yeah, a very good and honest person but or group why? of people is salt of the earth. Um, I think it is a little biblical. <clears throat> um, oh, by referring to people as salt of the earth, mm-hmm. Jesus is telling Ugh. us we should be affecting our fellow humans with joy for life that comes from the Lord. As salt affects food for flavor, believers in Christ should affect the world by the way we live and act toward one another. Oh, like oh so salt they're flavoring. the earth. Like you are a piece of salt on the earth. Yeah. Oh. Oh. As it if, took you saying that for me to really get it. Yeah, like you are. Like we are little specks of salt being poured making on the earth world better to make yeah. Earth a little more yeah. uh, salty. Like, salt flavorful. was like the original ice, right? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, salt used to be the most valuable commodity back when we didn't have ice to keep meats and fish cold because it would go bad, and so you would like bury it in salt, and by burying it in salt, it would preserve it. I this I don't know. Oh. That sounds right. It's, yeah. yeah, it sounds I think fair. So. But salt of the earth, I never thought about it as in like like the pepper of the earth. The, like you're the right, pe- you're that the, would also apply. You're the pepper of this town. Yeah. Hmm. What was the other one? Cream of the crop? Cream of the crop. That one I don't get. Like creamed corn? Yeah, but what? <laughs> Should we look it up with We're the cream of the crop meaning? Now. What is the meaning of cream of the crop? Cream just, of the crop. We're just saying words now. Mm-hmm. I know the cream rises to the top. Yeah. Um... You're making me want an iPad. I love having an iPad. It's better than a laptop. Yeah. You can get... Couldn't disagree more. What do you mean? Okay. A laptop is so much more functional. I kind of want one for Obsessed. It is fun to have like, yeah. on a desk. It makes you feel like you're getting something yeah. done. Yeah. Oh, and the touchscreen's nice. Um, well, oh, it's inspired by the French phrase, la creme de la creme, which right. loosely translate the cream of the cream. This phrase is used when someone tries to convey highest value or quality of a person or project. So, yeah, I think it's just like the best of the best, the best of the crop. The okay. best. Brooke, Olivia wants to know, what reality show would you thrive on? Ooh, definitely not The Bachelor. Not a loved one. No. How come? Just too I, embarrassing? I yeah, I would just not want part that part of my life to be on camera. Yeah, I almost was on the reality show Are You the One, which is on MTV. Yeah. And that's like a dating one where you fill out a personality test and then you join a house filled with people who could be your potential right. match, but you don't know who right. it is. And so by mingling, talking, flirting, and dating, 
Huh. You, you hopefully that you find your one. If you find your one at the end, you win. But I mean, the I, stupid thing about that show is like you could actually fall in love with someone, but that doesn't matter because you're not, that's not the goal of the show. The goal is to like strategically find your match, even if they're not the person that you like. Could yeah. you just say the things that you wrote down? Hey, are you the yeah. one that likes this music that I like? <laughs> no? Okay, moving. Like, is oh, that not how it works? Ma- uh, that actually, I wonder now if that's I'm confused. Part of like the boundaries or guidelines is you can't <laughs> talk about what you wrote uh, the down questionnaire. in your forms. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah, when it came out, I was so interested if any of the people were going to be potential matches for me, but none of the people I was attracted mm. to. I also have the biggest fear of if I was on a dating show, would never be on one now that I'm married. But like, it's all about like the scoring behind oh, you. Oh, that'll change the whole... Do you think you'd, you're uh-huh. going on as yeah. just this person who's so down to earth, uh-huh. just comfortable with themselves, but then they're just going to be like... Bam, bam, da, 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 and they could portray you in a whole different way. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't want. I also have this like really irrational fear that if I were to go on like Married at First Sight or Love is Blind and the person like was not into me, then like people watching that... <gasps> That would kind of like seep into their subconscious, yeah. and they would be like, "She's undesirable." Mm. Oh, it's a little bit of self-preservation so I, there. I guess, yeah. That's, would you? Would fair. you ever do like Survivor? I think you would actually I'd be die. very likable on Survivor. Is Survivor? I mean, some challenges are you know physically demanding and stuff, yeah. but I think it's a personality game as well. And to win people over, right. do you think you're a person who would be could make alliances easily? Yes. Yeah. I do, but then I'd get like really, really scared to betray someone, <laughs> and then I just wouldn't win. Yeah. Because I'm not gonna do that because I want everyone to like me. Mm. But I think I would thrive on more of just like a keeping up with the Kardashians, but make it. <laughs> oh, just a like, straight about, up yeah. reality. Yeah. Yeah. Show. Not, not like a Big Brother, but right. more like a Vanderpump something. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Would you be causing drama? You think? Like throwing wine in someone's face. I mean, like, you never think that you're going to be the one, but who knows when the cameras are in your face and you're in close quarters with people? (laughs) Probably. Would you do, would you enjoy doing the confessionals after like the breakdown? Yeah. Although, like, doing something like that with your friends and then watching what they have to say about you and vice versa, I don't know if I could survive that. Right. Like, imagine after we did a night out. And then the next morning, we all did confessionals about what happened. Right. Can you believe Tristan made out with whatever? And it's like, or if like someone was like shit talking me, I, and to watch that back, right. I wouldn't be able to like Ooh, look at me that. Me and person. Matt are just like Brooke yeah. was just such a mess last yeah. night. Oh my god! Right. We would never say that though. But well, you would on a reality show because that's what reality TV is. Right. You have to talk yeah. shit. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Would you? Okay. Thirty years down the line, would you ever do Real Housewives? I guess it depends on the direction that my life has gone in. Yeah. I'd like to think no. Like I'd like to think I'd have like a <laughs> like a sweet little wholesome family, but like not real I don't know. Maybe if I ex podcasters. Yeah, I don't. I would like to think no, but who's to say? Okay, uh, I have a fuck Mary kill. Ooh, I love for those. you. Um, and I think this one. Hold on one second. I had it up, but then this other one. Okay, fuck Mary kill. Jonathan Groff, mm. Matthew Gray Goobler, <laughs> Andrew Garfield. <laughs> I'm actually finding that to be completely impossible. <laughs> okay. There's, al- there's also another one that's Nathan Fielder, Matthew Gray Goobler, Andrew Garfield. The Jonathan Groff one's harder. Okay. Let's stick with that. In this scenario, is he gay? Yeah, he's gay. So, like, he would not enjoy the marriage or having sex with me? No. Is he gay so if he's life? not happy, yeah. Oh, okay. if he's not happy, I will kill him for him. Oh, okay, good. yeah. Even though, like, I would want both of those you other things. Like from to have him, him around. Yeah. So now we have Matthew Gray Goobler and Andrew Garfield. I would marry left. Matthew and and fuck Andrew. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. Okay. You think Matthew's got the long term potential in the do. partner that you're looking for? I do. Also, that accent you probably get sick of after a while. He's Andrew's accent? No. The yeah, the British one. One. Oh. I wouldn't get sick of that. You don't think so? No, I love a British accent. I just think Matthew Gray Goobler is like, I love his creativity. I love Mm -hmm. his life, but his design choices in his house. I feel like I would run into disagreements about it because he would have the final say in everything. And he'd be like, no, we have to have this massive throne chair that's made out of (laughs) skeleton bones. And I will say, go off, King. Okay. (laughs) I love it. Do you know where he lives? No. Okay. Do you? I know it's in town. In this town, he lives in like fifty different places. Okay, yeah. but I just didn't know. Have you ever been like that obsessed with a celebrity where you know exactly where they live? No, no, you've never like googled someone's address. I have googled. Just, I haven't gotten any information. Okay, 
I wouldn't like go to someone's Dude, so house. Are celebrities' addresses available? Sometimes. When I was uh, working in college for a like a proposition uh, that had to get passed, and we had to call like registered voters and stuff. I would look up celebrities oh. that were registered voters because their addresses That's were scary. on there. That's kind of scary. It is. It's very creepy. Yeah. But I only. I don't think that database is like out there. But the one I had access to, I did. Never did anything too creepy, but I would just look mm-hmm. it up to see, like, ooh, With all what's of their my, house look like? Yeah. The last celebrity whose address I did look up to see where they lived though was Octavia Spencer. Was she in Dallas or something? No, or? she just lives near Heath or whatever. And I was just curious, like, would I ever run into her? Interesting. In the neighborhood, I just like Octavia Spencer. Yeah, I would. Ne- I would never though, like, show up at someone's house. Absolutely not. Hmm. No, that's scary. Okay, just curious. Okay, Brooke. <laughs> um, have any of the celebrities in your tier list changed as of recently? I know that you have a big list of... Yeah, I do. I have really been fixating on Jonathan Groff recently, so I would actually put him in one right now. He was actually my first ever like huge, massive like tier one celebrity crush. And was that because of Spring Awakening? It was because of Glee, and then because of Glee, I backtrack to spring awakening oh. like i didn't know spring awakening when it was out oh i was all about spring awakening i wish when I, was. I, I wish i was those you've known and love is on the side you without them <laughs> the world oh my god i haven't listened to that soundtrack in so long the words are escaping me man i'm it, sorry Please oh it's okay me. i love i just that's my favorite song from that musical and i was watching woodstock i even think i texted you recently uh-huh. about how jonathan groff mm-hmm. that was his first like big mm-hmm. on-screen mm-hmm. Role. Yeah, he's I remember. A stud. He he really is a stud. I love him so much, and he's such a sweetheart. Okay, if you go see a musical on Broadway, do you go wait uh, to meet the celebrities after? I used to when I was younger, but now I wouldn't. Because yeah. now, I'm, what do I even say? Hey, I, I met Larry David when he did his uh, you Broadway waited, show. You waited outside to it meet was, him. It was the. It wasn't even the first show. It was the first night of preview, so it was his first time ever on stage. He did like a performance for like six weeks. Uh, someone wrote a play. I think he might have written it called Fish Out of Water. And it, I was living in New York and I somehow got a ticket. I was like dead center. His first time on stage. How was he? Unbelievably good. Like, so I wish there was a recording of it. I don't I don't know that there is, but it was so good. And then afterwards, I didn't know that this is a thing. This is my first Broadway show ever. And everyone's like waiting with their playbills. So I was like, what's going on? They're like, usually the actors come out. And I was like... If I fucking see Larry David right now, I'm going to lose my mind. I waited for a few minutes, and he comes out, and there was some dude that, like, had a tattoo of Larry David's face, and I think he's like, that's the fucking dumbest thing I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> he like, he kind of just, like, made fun of the guy, and then I was, like, next in line, and he shook my hand, and he, he go, I put my hand down and go, great job, Larry, and he goes, are you sick? And I was like, no. He's like, so if I shake your hand, I'm not going to get sick? I'm like, no. He goes, because I got to go, go, go on again tomorrow and the next uh, day and the next day. I was like, I promise you I'm not sick, Larry. i just big fan. Love you. You're my favorite. Whoa. And he shook my hand. Wow. Signed something for me. And wow. Then, yeah. That's awesome. Great dude. It's awesome meeting a celebrity and they are exactly who you think they're going to be. He literally was, it was curb. Yeah. Like, are you sick? Yeah. I got to yeah. go on tomorrow. Yeah. I can't get sick. Wow. I, it was unbelievable. Oh, that's great. Do you think if you met Matthew Gray Goobler again, he would remember you? No, I, I hope not. Why? I re- was that a I great was, interaction? No, I mean, he's just so sweet, and he's. but I was like not, I was screaming at him. <laughs> so, okay, if you did meet him again, you wouldn't bring it. I wouldn't it, scream. Uh, you wouldn't bring I wouldn't, up, no, but you wouldn't bring up. Not we at actually all. did meet, no. remember when my friend Connor no, gave you No, I this? would not bring that up. Okay. Do you think that he's seen that video? No. He's not like chronically online uh, no. that much. No, he's not. I pray that he has no idea who I am. Now, if he was interested in coming on Obsessed, would you be like, yes, or be like, I can't. I can't do it. I think about that all the time, Matt, because like my initial reaction is like, I can't. I can't. Because I would just be so anxious, and I actually like don't know if I'd be able to do it. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, you cannot let your anxiety get in the way of something like that. Yeah. So it, I mean, it's really... It would be you would, a, like, a toss-up. You would want to like maybe hang out with him like the night before... And like have dinner, and then, then you're comfortable enough to like interview him the next day. I don't know like if I'll some... ever be comfortable oh, with Matthew Gray. In, in the presence of any of my celebrity crushes. I don't ever want to be in the room with any of them. Like I have no desire to meet them. You you know like, they do, do like say the people say like do not meet your idols. Mm-hmm. 
That's like a, a truth. Mm-hmm. And why do people say that so often? Well, well, in case they let you down. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're not a fan anymore. It is weird. I ca- I feel like I do kind of fall victim to that. Or like after I do finally meet someone that I've been like obsessed about. Yeah. The next day I notice I don't, I just, I'm not listening to their music uh-huh. as much. I'm just done with it. Yeah. For me, it's like if I meet them, like I want to be memorable. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not good at celebrity interactions, so I would just huh. rather not at all. Connor seems to be very good at celebrity yeah, of course. interactions. Ethical Why cloud chasing? Yeah. Why is that? Why he, is Connor he, so good at that? It's a science that he's mastered. He spent his life learning <laughs> the what's craft. His, what's his line? Oh, I haven't seen you since Thanksgiving. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a while or whatever. He says that to celebrities. Uh-huh. That's what he told us on a, on a podcast. Uh-huh. He'll go up to like Jason Siegel, like, "Hey, I haven't seen you since Thanksgiving." That's kind of a great line. Such uh-huh. a good line, and they find it funny. It's a, apparently, or it confuses yeah. them, or I mean, he seems to be doing well. Have you seen him do it in the flesh? Yeah, it's actually insane. <laughs> it really is like a science that he yeah. has mastered. Huh? Do you think? Do you think women should get manicures every two to three weeks? Slash necessary? Slash expected? If you want. Okay. I just didn't know <laughs> if this is something you have like commented about. Oh, no. I never get my nails done. I this can't person just still. thought it was Google and typed it in, in the search yeah. bar. Whatever makes you happy and comfortable. What is NATO? It's a, that's a good question. <laughs> it's um, a union of sorts yes. of co- countries yes. that are in. Do you know what cahoots. NATO is? I definitely they're, know they're what does NATO stand for? National. I don't know what NATO stands for, but I know what it is. Is it, is it National Association Trade Organization? Yeah. It's trade they're organization. In they're it's, in it's a bunch of countries that basically all agree that we are all like united. And if a country, if, if a country attacks one NATO country, then it's like all of those other countries uh-huh. are attacked as well. Yes. So you join NATO. America's in NATO. A lot of Europe is in it. And, like, that was a big thing with the Ukraine war is, like, uh-huh. Ukraine's technically not in NATO. But, anyway. Right. Uh, but, NATO is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. That's we're close. Yeah, it's kind of sick. Oh, I'm sure what is your Jersey Shore beach town of choice? And also, do you like Johnson's mm. Caramel Popcorn? Um, <laughs> I don't think I've had Johnson's right Caramel group, Popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Ocean City. Oh, very. that's very Philly of you. Yeah. Margate. Or like Margate and Longport. Yeah. But Ocean City, I just love the boardwalk. Yeah. You been Mar- to Margate? Yeah, that's where I grew up going. You, oh, I yeah. grew up going to Longport, actually, but that's like okay. on the Margate border. I wonder if we've ever crossed paths without knowing it in Margate. I'd like to think so. Me too. What is the vibe at Margate like? It's where like Jared Ringel's family has their summer oh. house. Oh. Like that's, if you can think about like that sort of town. Okay. A lot of rich Jews, very relaxed, very calm beautiful beaches but adjacent to atlantic city which is a nightmare so it's it's you know you get the best of both worlds yeah i wish our damn it oh our tv worked i know i had so many other fun things i had fan fiction i wanted to read with you that was about me (gasps) oh please find that you want me to yeah okay um and i've never looked up fan fiction about me ever well the last time i did i think it was just like big in the heyday of the vlog squad days and if i was in it it would just be like this whole fan fiction about zane and this woman hooking up and it would be like and matt knocked and would be like hey do you guys need any water (laughs) oh my gosh this is crazy should i I skip to the smut yeah please matt (laughs) let's skip to the smut are you the center of the smut? Am I? Wait, does this even... Does it, do, does I, do I even get to hook up with this person? I think just basically I end up just telling this girl she needs to get a ride home. Dance... Okay, this is written in a second person. Dance with me, you smiled, stretching out your hands to his. He nodded and took your hand. The second your hand took his, the mass around you began to cheer. Your cheeks had a flush to them, as did Matt's. You turned to him and smiled as you swayed to the music and held his hand, pulling him to move. Awkwardly, his hip moved, and you threw your head back in laughter. Did you just take me to dance just to make fun of me, he asked, biting his lips slightly. (laughs) Good lord. No, oh. that wasn't no, that wasn't the first intention. But now it but now it might be, you teased. You smiled at him, holding back your laughter when he moved his hips again. So then what was the goal here? He asked, looking at you nervously. Even when the liquor cursing 
coursing through you. Your heart pounded. Well, uh, I think you're cute, you stated. Shrugging on the inside, you were screaming in fear. The color in his cheeks deepened, and the same with yours. My they cheeks. are deepening right now. My They're deepening cheeks. right now as this we speak. This girl is manifesting this story live right now. And then I end up calling her an Uber home. <laughs> Why does you're it, a gentleman. It you're always gentleman. ends like this. You're a gentleman. Oh, Matt. Man. Maybe they're respecting the sanctity of your marriage. This they- one is called You Will Never Believe What Just Happened, slash slash Matt King. It's on Soft Baby Dobrik Tumblr. Yeah. You're using a gift from probably 2016, it looks like. I think so. Pre-workout, Matt. Man. Huh. I, I know. I need to really sit down and read through these. Have you ever Crank read a fan fiction, though, about you? There was just that one about the trainer from the gym. Oh, yes. Which ended in catastrophe. You and Logan? Mm-hmm. Logan I Paul? Him, no, no um, there was a really cute trainer at Equinox okay. back when I first joined, and I posted on my story. I was like, I am obsessed with this trainer, Logan. Can someone write a fan fiction about me and Logan? And I oh, was, you commissioned I was, fan fiction. <laughs> I did not think for one second that someone would write one, but they did. Was it good? Yeah, it was pretty good. Wow. It was just like, it wasn't like smutty or anything, but it was just like sweet, you know? Are we still Candy. in touch with Logan in any so, way? So, I had spoken about this on the podcast. Okay. Not thinking that it would get back to the staff of Equinox. Sure. Um, of course. Yeah. The next time I walk into Equinox, Logan introduces himself. Whoa. <laughs> yes! Hey. I was truly like so, so mortified. I didn't go back for months. But we got a picture together. He's a oh, sweetheart. Oh, that's great. That's, <laughs> and a, good, that's did, a good yeah. story. Wasn't there a TikTok recently where someone was like prank phone calling in Equinox oh. and Logan picks up? Yeah, it wasn't him. Oh, it was a yeah, different Logan. It, yeah, I wouldn't know his voice anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, people were attacking me in that. How long have we been recording? Uh, I think we can wrap it up here. We're well, going to wrap 20. it up. Should we do the connections? Oh my God, yes. I saved myself. Well, let's do the connections. <laughs> let's do the connections. For the people who don't know, Brooke is actually in our Spelling Bee New York Times game group chat. Brooke is pretty notorious for doing it every day. <laughs> and That's what they say. You do pretty good. You, you do you do I'm fare pretty, moderate. pretty well. Okay, so let's just make sure we're all looking at the same intro. So we have bag, yep. key, yep. study. Yep. Okay. Okay, so, and Matt and I actually read an interview with the woman who makes these every day, and she said that they intentionally put them in an order. Oh, interesting. Sometimes to confuse you. So let's not do shuffle. Okay. So that way we're all on the same page as we do this. And now, do you have a strategy, Brooke, when you hop into uh, connections, or do you just start going with your gut? I start, start going with my gut. Okay. Right now, I have a category, but I think I'm not ready to lock it in. Okay. Okay. Now, Why don't you I... speak to us about that category, Okay. Brooke? Do you want me to speak to you about it? Yes. Well, I see or... what I always look for is I always look for one that really stands out and doesn't make sense. And I see island on there. Okay. And now island is now, I think, a kitchen island. Yeah. And there's counter. I Yeah. But get this, Matt. There's also a possible category that I had seen of rooms in the house, i.e. kitchen, den, bedroom, study. Those All of good. those make sense. But I'm not uh, ready to lock it in. Kitchen, bedroom, den, Okay, wait. Cram, stuff, jam, pack. I feel good about that one. So, like, pack it in, jam it yeah. in, stuff it in. Cram it in. Cram it in. I we, feel we're good gonna, about We're going to submit I that. I feel confident about locking that okay. one. Uh, this feels good. Yes, let's do we're it. We're going to submit and... We are correct. Oh, oh wow. Right. And that was the blue. I know. Blue. That always feels good when you get... And just for those listening and watching, uh, the colors that they appear in are indicative of their difficulty yellow being the easiest purple being the hardest sometimes i'll get a purple mm-hmm. one first mm-hmm. and it's usually the purples will have like a blank and then the, the word next to it and sometimes i think that's the easiest yeah. one but okay what is a toll uh it's a type atoll. of island yeah like that's so i they... think it would go with island atoll oh bar, maybe yeah. bar like a sandbar maybe bar and key like the florida keys oh, oh key it, has to be part well, of it well is there anything else here sprout i don't think so okay well i guess we'll I'm lock that in. it in yes okay we all right it. land surrounded by water bikini atoll bean bag bean dip bean sprout oh oh Bean den? Bean bag, bean sprout. Bean study? Bean counter. What's a bean, bean counter? counter? That was on, that was on the counter? New York Times crossword the other day. Yeah, a bean counter is like another word for an accountant, like a guy who's just counting beans. Oh. I think. Yeah. Let's do that it. That was the purple. Oh my God, we have the yellow as the last, and that was the original one that we had thought. Ah. Den, bedroom, study, kitchen. Wow, that was a great... Easy. Great that play, was a good guys. one. Um, 
Yeah, that was really fun. I love doing the connections. Me too. It's like oh. the only reason I wake up every morning. And, and, and sometimes on the last one, I try and guess what the category is if I don't know it. Yes, I always because do. Because it's like once you get the first three, the game's kind of over because it's like defaulted. You got all four. Mm-hmm. But if I don't know what that last category is, I'll try and figure it out. And do you ever do that where you're just like, what could this category be? And try Before and Before you submit it in, yes, yes. no, nah, I just want to see those. You want to see I just oh, want to see those beautiful I, colors. I try to guess, it, but it I usually like can't. another round of the game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love has it. there ever been one that you didn't get that has just stuck with you and you can't believe you didn't get it right? Like bra parts. I, I think about that one every day. Bra parts? No, I Because it had like cup, oh, yeah. cup, wire, clasp, and. There was some word I never heard of in that, too. I actually feel like usually when I don't get them, I'm like, I wouldn't have gotten that. There was also w- things that have eyes. It was like a needle, a hurricane. <gasps> oh, my God. There was one. It was yeah. about, it was like a, like sewing or yarn related oh, thing, yes, a fiber yes. art related thing. And I didn't know one of the words, but I forget what it was. The guitar, there was a guitar parts one yeah. that I didn't get. And I was very frustrated. There's a type of sewing or something that I didn't know. Should we try a Wordle, too, while okay. we're at it? Yeah, let's do a Wordle, guys. Okay. Now, Brooke, when you do Wordle, do you play the same word every day, or do you just like to... Different word every day, Matt. All right, well, you pick the word for the day. Really? Yeah, yeah. let's do it. You're the guest, Brooke. I, I guess the word always follows the same formula. How about share? S-H-A-R-E. So you throw the E's at the end, I usually huh? do and put a vowel in the middle. Yeah, I try and get my Ooh. A's and E's out of the way. Oh, okay. that was a great first guess. Starting on a good note. S is right and the E is right. Spade? No. Spice? I'm down with spice. Let's okay. do spice. Okay. Scope. Hold on, hold on. Sorry. Oh, Brooke, you're brilliant. Oh, Brooke, it's I definitely I love your scope. brain. Wow. Let's do scope. Boom! Maybe I should keep doing these games at 429. <laughs> Maybe your brain is at its I think when sharpest. I wake up, I do it like when I'm having my coffee and I'm not up yet. I couldn't agree more. I, I'm I impatient, it, though. I wake up. It's Yeah, I, my, it's yeah. so exciting to open your connections yeah. to see what they are. I do it bleary-eyed. And Me I'm, too. And my brain's not even fully on. Exactly. And sometimes there's like that magic of between dream and sleep where you're just like, oh, I see it. Uh-huh. And you're a genius. But most of the time, uh, if I get the first one wrong, my day's ruined. I completely agree. Do you agree. still do the spelling bee? Like, if I'm really bored. Yeah. yeah. I like to do, just to find what the word that yeah. uses all the letters are, and, like, try and find the panogram, and then I'm, I'm set for the Because spelling bee will haunt my mind throughout the rest of the day. It doesn't I give me the same rush. It's all I'm thinking are just those letters I like can't... Like Queen's sh- Gambit? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just laying in bed, looking at my ceiling, thinking of the little honeycomb of letters oh. dancing around. I've lost my zest for spelling, spelling bee. bee. I'm glad they added another game. I've been debating like should we change the name of the group mm. to like New York oh. Times games or should we just keep it spelling bee? I like the new emoji you put there. I, I did. Too, it, I just I liked it a little bit more satisfying mm-hmm. as, I like as that. an image. I, I kind of like sticking to our roots, you know, keep keep uh keep us humble. Yeah. That's where we started. I would be down to change it if we think of something that's like insane yeah. and it's like, "Oh, that's who we are." But it, until we find that, we should just keep it. I'm so glad we have this friendship, Brooke. Me too. Brooke, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having I me. I cannot wait for your new podcast. January 26th, people. <gasps> Good memory, Matt. Obsessed. With thank Mark you. It on your calendar. With Brooke Averick. And we gotta, thank yo. you, guys. Well, thank you. All right, we'll see you next time, folks. Later. Okay.